So high blood pressure, diabetes and coronavirus, what do they have in common and why is high blood pressure so key when it comes to the outcomes for coronavirus? So I'm going to share some really key information with you here. I need to make clear that everything I share with you is backed by the current scientific evidence. We are still light on the ground when it comes to studies with coronavirus, but if you're watching this on Facebook or on YouTube or anywhere else actually, the links to the scientific articles will be in the description. So click through and read that for yourself. Um, I think it's there is so much fear mongering out there. I don't want that for you. I want you to be aware. I don't want you to be panicked and I want you to have the right information so you can take the steps to prepare yourself. So we're going back to school now. Um, I'm going to give you a quick science lesson so I can explain why some um, high blood pressure drugs that a lot of you will be on is putting you at increased risk and what you can do about it. So there's a couple of things to consider here. First of all, high blood pressure and diabetes go hand in hand. High blood pressure is an inflammatory disease, usually caused by insulin resistance, um, which means that your body doesn't handle infections well anyway. So there's a direct connection between high blood pressure and diabetes. If you have high blood pressure, you're twice as likely to become diabetic. If you're diabetic, you're twice as likely to have high blood pressure. Now, what do I mean by high blood pressure? So generally, when you're diagnosed as diabetic, they'll check your blood pressure, and if it's even a wink above normal, they'll stick you on medication. Right, so the evidence we have, and I'll put the link in the description, is that there is no value to treating blood pressure until it goes over at least 135 millimeters of mercury. So that is the top reading. So they'll talk about systolic and diastolic, so it'll be 120 over 80. That's the standard blood pressure that we're going for. And so all it means is the pressure of your blood and your vessels when the heart's beating, that's the top number, that's the highest pressure. So that's usually 120. And then, um, and then when it's in between beats, when it's relaxed, so that's 80, that's the lowest number. So they, in medical terms, systolic, I always remember it is the high number because diastolic D, um, S comes after D. Um, I don't know if that works in my mind, but all you need to know is that's actually, it's just a measurement of the pressure in your blood vessels. And that gives us an idea on how um, well your blood vessels are performing and how well your heart is performing. Okay, so take away from that little science lesson is that there is no evidence that treating blood pressure under 135 um, has any additional benefits to your health. Okay, so that's take home message number one. Take home message number two is that getting your blood sugars down um, and without medication and getting your weight down naturally. And if you've had, you know, sign up to my email, sign up to my list. I give you all the information on how to do that. Drugs can't do it. You can. Um, is the most effective way of bringing your blood pressure down. But we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about coronavirus and why coronavirus um, seems to really impact people with high blood pressure. Now, the key to this is that the way the virus infects. So the way the virus infects is it goes into your lungs. So you touch your nose, you wipe your eyes, something like that, and it gets down into your lungs. Now, in your lungs, you have... Um, angiotensin receptor sites. You don't need to remember that, you can just remember them as ACE2. So we have a particular receptor site that um, that, that virus uses as its fast track in. So actually the virus causes viral pneumonia. That's what it does. It basically infects your lungs and um, the pneumonia gets bad enough that not enough oxygen is getting from your lungs into your body and you have a systemic cascade of organ failure. So if they're not getting enough oxygen, they will gradually stop working. So it's the pneumonia that kills people. We know that people on specific blood pressure drugs have worse outcomes. And that is because those drugs use the same receptor site in the lungs. So those receptor sites are made more sensitive. So it, it seems, and this is the beginning stages, but it seems that it makes the person more susceptible. So it gives the virus an easier hold. So 
those drugs are very, there's two classes of drugs that act on those receptor sites in your lungs that help reduce blood pressure. Because you have other receptors, you have those receptors around the body, not just in the lungs, but this is where it gets you. Okay, so takeaway lesson number three is that virus, the virus, uses a particular receptor site as its gateway to get into your body and infect you. It's the same, it's in the lungs, it's the same receptor site that a lot of the blood pressure medications use. So that is the issue you have. And I need to be very clear that we are still learning at this stage. So what I'm telling you is based on preliminary evidence. So the advice would be, and this is advice that is con that is available out there to your doctors, your MDs, your nurses, to change your blood pressure medication. That is this suggestion, and I'm just going to read this now. Who said this? So um, the biggest medical journal in the UK is called the BMJ, British Medical Journal, and they published a clear link So in which Swiss researchers point out we um, need to look into the link between the two, and they're suggesting that it will be a good idea for people on those types of medications to switch to different blood pressure lowering medications. So the medications are in the description. I've given you a list of all of them. They can be called different names in different countries. So I have given you the standard brand name and then what they call the generic name, um, which is the same name, the medical name that will be used around the world. So you can have a look, go to your bathroom cupboard, pick up the pill boxes that you're on and see if any of them are on that list. Now, this is not something to panic about. The medical system is very busy at the moment. Um, a good place to start with this is with your pharmacy. Your pharmacists are incredibly highly trained professionals. So a good place to start is with them. You can even call them on the phone and say, look, I'm on this drug. There is evidence that coronavirus has worse outcomes and higher mortality rates for people on these medications. What would be an alternative? Um, so that you can, uh, then it's a phone call to your doctor or if you've got online prescription ordering um, to try and change that medication. Now, if you're watching this, a lot of the medications, you can't just come off cold turkey. So some of the medications that you'll be on, will, you'll need to uh, do a stepwise reduction as you're taking the other medications. So please don't um, hear what I'm saying and throw your prescription in the bin. That is not what I'm suggesting. What I'm suggesting is finding out what you're on, asking your medical professional to change you to a different prescription. Now, what I need to tell you about your medical professional is that they're going to be overwhelmed with all the evidence out there. They may not be aware of this data. So again, I'll put information below for you so that you can um, print that out and take that to your doctor. They absolutely love Dr. Google and random people like me on the internet suggesting you should do something. Um, but in all seriousness, there's, it's, there's no skin off their nose, UK saying, um, to change your medication. All you're asking is to switch on to a different medication um, to reduce your risks. Um, but there's no big downside to you in doing this. Okay, so the two, we in the trade, we call them classes of medication. Um, so they generally have, all have the same endings. So the first ones we would call A, R, B, 2s. So they all end in sartan. So low sartan, herbisartan, candesartan, telmasartan, valsartan. So those are um, the sartans. Uh, low sartan is the one a lot of you will be on. That's the most common. Um, and then we go into the ACE inhibitors. So they're called ACEs um, or ACE inhibitors, like I just said. And those are the Ramaprils. And, um, and I've got a list of them here for you. So those are the uh, Capitin, the Vasotec, the Monoprils. Um, so Perindopril, Lysinopril, Enalapril, all those ones that, you know, you a lot of you will be on. So, um, so that is the key part of this, that um, coronavirus uses the same receptor as a lot of, uh, as two of the major classes of blood pressure lowering drugs. And that is why it appears to increase your risk 
All right, so that is the take home message from this. Please share this around. This is important information. We are overwhelmed with stuff at the moment. Um, so I want you to be aware. I want you to stay calm. Stress is really bad for blood sugars. Okay, people, so that is my, um, my long science um, exercise or science class even today. So click the button so you can get access to, um, to the classes of drugs, everything you need to know. Um, and I've got lots of other videos like this. So uh, click on the button, subscribe, so I can uh, regularly give you all these videos. I will be making them as we go along because everything is changing so fast. So I sift through the data and pick out the important nuggets that you really need to know to protect your health. So sign up, you'll get all of my videos and you'll get all the new ones that come out. Have a good weekend.